Northern Exposure is going and it's become a big hit. It was a critical hit. It's the only show that I did that was a critical hit. It was a top 20 show and sometimes a top 10 show. And it was a it was, it was a commercial hit, is what I'm saying, and it was also a critical hit. The critics loved it. I mean, it was like everybody loved it. And um, so that gave us tremendous kind of uh, juice in the business. And at this, and I was, we were represented by CAA, and CAA w decided, Mike Ovitz decided, he didn't tell me he decided this, but in some way he decided that he was going to put advertising agencies out of business. That if you were Coca-Cola and you wanted to make Coca-Cola commercials, you don't need an advertising agency. Come to me, and I'm going to give you, um, uh, you know, my, I don't know, big directors. I'm going to give you uh, uh, Rob Reiner, and I'm going to give you a couple of guys. I'm going to give you Josh Brand and John Falsey. So they came to us and said, do you want to do a Coca-Cola commercial? And Falsey, God bless him, said, yeah. And I said, I keep saying God bless him. I'm not a, not a religious whatever, but, uh, you know, uh, heaven help us. Um, and um, so we were hired to do a Coca-Cola commercial that we were going to write and create and that I was going to direct. And because it was this big deal that Mike Ovitz was going to put out, put you know all the advertising agencies were going to become irrelevant and expendable. Why do you need the middleman to basically do it? You have a product, Microsoft. Just go to CAA, and we're going to give you the most creative guys in Hollywood, and they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. So we come up with this story that doesn't have any words, and we storyboard the whole thing, and we go to Italy. And they've got to pay me, I forgot what it's called, my lawyer said, they've got to pay me what they pay everyone. So I got to get, they, they had to pay me what they paid Rob Reiner. They had to pay me, whatever they paid the top directors in Hollywood to do these things, they had to pay me. It was the best job I ever had. Two weeks in Tuscany, doing a 30 second or 60 second commercial. The DP was Jean de Bont, who had became, a, afterwards became a very successful director, and he was a big DP who did big, big movies. And I had a German crew following me around to do a, you know, a German documentary of the making of this commercial. And I had these two actors. One was a Spanish dancer. One was an Italian guy. And they didn't speak any English. So there I am going, a destra, sinistra. I'm having a ball. Anyway, we make this thing. And I go back in the editing room. And I must, and the editor and I must have seen the commercial a thousand times. The only thing Coca-Cola cared about was the guy, when he drinks the Coca-Cola, his Adam's apple, is it moving the way they wanted it? So when we got to that shot, I was like, okay, guys, because all of a sudden, then all of the people from Coca-Cola and everybody would like, go right to the monitor. I mean, they didn't care about the rest of the stuff. You, you know, have a ball, guys, make a night of it. You know, is that one good? The guy would be throwing up from drinking all this Coca-Cola. And um, so we got back, and the editor is, and, I, and he must have looked at it a thousand times, and I must have looked at it a thousand times, and Coca-Cola must have looked at it a thousand times. And one day, and they were going to, they showed it in the Academy Awards, you know, it was on television, they showed it in movie theaters, and I, one day, I'm watching it again, I don't remember why, probably because, why not, and I'm looking at it, and I freeze it, and I go, What? Okay, here's the shot. It's a it's a it's a voyeurism. There's, a, there's this handsome glass blower, an Italian guy, who's blowing up a thing in his shop in in Italy. And what he's going to blow up is a Coca Cola bottle. Mm -hmm. And there's this beautiful girl riding a bicycle, and she sees him, and she looks through the window, and she watches him. What he does at the end, he's got this big long tube, and he basically <laughs> has, and at the end is a Coca Cola bottle. And what he does is he breaks off the Coca Cola bottle, and there he holds it up. He puts it, puts it down or something. And I look at it and I go, shit. The thing that he's blowing it from is about seven feet long. And he's breaking it off. And his other hand is there. What's holding up the big, long thing? The point is, he couldn't have done what he did on camera. And no one ever, 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 ever saw it. Yeah. And I learned something. I learned something. And it goes back to the thing you were asking or saying about learning about when the doctor, when Fiscus, Howie Mandel gave this long speech about how he killed somebody in a way that you get he did something bad, but you don't know what he did. It's, 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 the, it's the basis of all magic tricks, which is what making television movies is. It's the most unrealistic, most fake 
process of anything, and yet when you watch it, it's the only one that looks really real. It's not like a play where the guy goes to the window and goes, I see the ships coming in on you. Oh, he's looking out a window on a, on a stage. And so I learn the same way that it's, there's a figure and there's a ground, and the eye can only look at one thing. Okay. So if you're watching the thing, or if you're listening to the thing, you're not, you're not seeing, if I'm doing a magic trick, I've, I've got to know what you're looking at so I can do the thing that I want to do that you're not looking at. And so that's what I kind of learn. And it's related to, you know, to, to, uh, to what actor, to, to when you're writing something that's, you can't understand what people are saying in a spy thing, but you know, they're spies or you're, it, it, it was this, and I learned something, and I learned something, and I said, it, it's physiological. It's not, you know, the way we absorb things. It's like when they're saying it's a dog. You pick something up without, you know, the, the network executives would say, oh, we don't understand what he's talking about. It goes, it doesn't matter. You don't want to do the whole script like that, obviously, but a little bit of that tells the audience that these people are good at what they do, and that's all the audience cares about. They don't care if they're nice people. Tony Soprano's not nice. They care that they're good at what they do. Because if you're not good at what they do, then they're not really interested in you.